damned flowers. <sighs> Must I burn them away every time I show myself here? Or you could always just ask before barging in without a warning. Basic manners wouldn't hurt, you know. <laughs> You've gotten way too comfortable addressing me in such a familiar way. I'm one of your people's gods, you know. You used to worship me. Yes, and then I had the chance to figure out you were no better than us. And that your father is God. You're just his spoiled firstborn with anger issues. Your mortal mind can comprehend what we are. So quit trying. Is that so? Then tell me, dear husband... Why is it that you are worshipped as a god of justice? I don't think chaining your wife to the moon for eternity is really an altruistic stance. I said shut up. You can't begin to understand what my father would have wanted. No, you shut up, Rex. Quit talking as if you know what your father would have wanted. Because with every passing day, it is becoming more clear that you don't. I've had to sit here and watch you commit all the heinous acts in the name of your father. Amia. Soren. Vox. Me. That was your fault, not his will. Now it's about time you stop using your invisible father as a moral shield to continue your misdeeds. <laughs> you act as if you've ever met him, but you don't know a damn thing my father would have wanted. He is order personified, a being of perfection. What could a flawed creature like you know of perfection? I see more than you think from this point in the sky, Rex, and I have felt your father's will in some ways. Your father is the one who gives me my immortality and these beautiful flowers. Why do you think I have the only thing able to weaken you? It's because your father gave me the ability to ensure that you never get to hurt me again. A means to defend myself for eternity from you. And I thank my new father dearly for this gift. You witch. You tyrant. As the world falls from grace around us, you think you have the right to question my methods? My brothers are down there making a mess of my father's worlds. Even I have no excuse for what I did to you. But in chaining you here, I've cleaned my mess. Now, I must make sure that Beck does not follow Vox's path. He's too close to making the same mistake that both Vox and I made. Vox just never saw it as a mistake. So I had to step in and show him otherwise. From the shadows. Thank you for the flowers, by the way. To be honest, it wasn't actually my intent to have the dragon woman killed. When she became a divine, I didn't think it possible. The goal was to keep her away from my brother, permanently. But your flowers gave them the way to do that lethally. And their child was also never heard of again. And in every instance, my hands were clean. I never broke the rule of physically harming a mortal life. You see pain as something superficial, because you've never experienced true pain. Perhaps you have, and that's why you are acting in such rash ways. Maybe the loss of your father was too much for you to bear, and you never had someone to grieve with you. I have all the time in the world, Rex. You made sure of that. I am a god to you. I feel no pain. I assume you've watched me from above for my entire mortal life. That's how you knew to target me for this cruel fate. But do you remember my past, Rex? When I was only 16, a plague hit Ravenfell Village and nearly wiped us all out. I lost my entire family to that sickness. And I was only a child. I cried. I grieved my family, Rex. And I had others around me who helped me along the way. Humans with goodness in their hearts. But when I was done, 
I picked myself up and I used my pain to help others, so they would never know such a pain like mine. That's what my father, Osiris Moon of Al-Assad, would have wanted. I had 16 years with my father before he was taken from me. You've had an eternity with yours before he left. You don't get to tell me about what a father would have wanted. You... you... <sighs> Why? Why do you continue to reach your hand into a fire that is sure to burn you? I can only cause you pain, yet you still try to reach me with your words. If anything, human persistence is admirable. Ugh, if it wasn't such an annoyance. <laughs> no one said marriage was easy. But it does help one to grow. You need to stop trying to reach me so hard, Bella. Perfection has a cost, and it's one that I am willing to pay. I'm not a human. I'm a divine. How could you ever understand anything about what we are? Hey, Mr. Divine, look at all these marks on my body. Look at how long I've lived. Look at all these flowers. What am I? Do you call this human? There is one truth that you can't escape or dodge, Rex. I am your wife, for better or for worse, as long as you wear that ring. I... you... you can't just... you don't understand, you can't. Ugh, this is a waste of my time. It's no better than talking to a flower. Pretty, but stationary. And useless otherwise. <laughs> Visit me again, Rex. If you love things staying as they are, I'll always be here. Literally, you chained me here. <laughs> Just stop talking to me like I'm your husband and treat me like your jailer. I'm not a being you can love. I'm an idol who should have never joined you on that mountain that night. Goodbye, Bella. Well, he actually said my real name this time. I think we're finally getting somewhere. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs>